After the dramatic arrest of two men, the RCMP have laid charges in an anti-terror case against at least one young person who can't yet be named under the Young Criminal Justice Act for facilitating a terrorist activity and counseling another person to use an explosive or lethal device that could cause death in a public place. All this unfolded after the FBI tipped off the RCMP about two suspects, one a Syrian refugee who they allege were manufacturing a homemade bomb and had planned an attack, no target was chosen. Now police have yet to release the motive, but it raises the question, is Canada taking security concerns seriously enough? Let's find out. Joining me now, the Border Security and Organized Crime Reduction Minister, Bill Blair, is in Toronto. Minister Blair, I want to start with this, these, uh, these uh, arrests. One of the suspects in the arrest in Kingston, allegedly uh, a Syrian refugee, your government has... Has your government gone back to do uh, checks on the security screening protocol for the people involved? Well, I, I can tell you, Evan, that this is an investigation being conducted by the RCMP, and, and with such investigations, the appropriate... Um, release of information should always just come from the RCMP and so you know they'll they, as they'll bring they bring information forward it'll inform the work that we're doing but we've been working very closely with the RCMP and CBSA for very many months and and on on ensuring that the hundreds of thousands of people that cross our border each and every day are subject to very rigorous security background checks um, overwhelmingly that has worked very effectively to keep our country safe and occasionally some individuals may become involved in criminality but it's not appropriate to comment on that ongoing matter until the RCMP okay. chooses to release it. And I understand this particular case is the ongoing investigation but if indeed one of the suspects was a Syrian refugee does it mean your government has to now go back and re-examine security protocols vis-a-vis -vis the 40,000 plus uh, Syrian refugees who have come in. Would that be enough to, for a full re-examination? Well, I, I can tell you, Evan, that everything depends on the evidence that, that comes forward in that investigation. And if there is indication and in, in evidence that, that processes can be improved, then, then certainly we would be informed by that. But again, you're asking me to speculate. The RCMP will conclude their investigation and the appropriate inf release of information should come only from that investigative body. And, and we're quite prepared to, you know, we, we work very closely um, with, with them and, and to respond to any issues that may arise as a result. Let's talk about another issue that people are looking for results. Your mandate as in this ministry is to modernize the safe third country agreement with the United States. As you know, that that's supposed to stop the flow of irregular slash illegal asylum seekers. Uh, tens of thousands have crossed over the border. It has cost Canadians hundreds of millions of dollars. What have you done practically to stop the flow? Actually, we've, we've done a great deal of work and we've achieved a, a significant level of success. First of all, with respect to the Safe Third Country Agreement, that's a bilateral agreement between Canada and the United States. It's been in place since 2004. We've reached out to Homeland Security. I went down and met with their senior officials in that department, uh, Secretary Nielsen's people. We've also corresponded. Uh, I've been working with Minister Freeland and our uh, Canada's ambassador in the United States. There's a lot of work going, ongoing between us and how we can enhance and improve that agreement to the mutual benefit of both countries. But that's not all we're doing, Evan. Okay, We've sorry, can I, hey, sorry, Mr. Blair, hold on. To I, those processes. Just, just, just hold on, pause. Let, let me just get practical here. One way to improve it is to stop what many call a loophole. Asylum seekers, they know the safe third country agreement only applies at legal border crossings. So they go to places like Roxham Road and they wander across the border. And guess what? They get put into the system. Municipalities are spending tens of millions of dollars trying to house these people while they're processed and the appeals process, which goes on for years. One practical fix is to make the safe third country agreement apply to the whole border, not just legal crossings. Have you made any progress changing that? Do you want to make that change with the U.S.? You know, that is part of the ongoing discussion between ourselves and the United States. It's, it's an agreement between the two countries. We cannot just unilaterally change the nature of that agreement. And that's why we're working very closely with the United States. But Evan, we're doing some other really important things that I think Canadians need to be aware of. First of all, we've, we've, we've examined that system and, and we're looking at all the different ways in which we can disincentivize and discourage people from crossing irregularly and encourage those who are seeking and require the protection of Canada and asylum, as they flee per persecution and, and harm is to encourage them to come across the border regularly. We've, we've done that through outreach into those communities. But it hasn't worked. Education. Like the numbers we've, haven't we've changed that much over the last year, though. 
Actually, and, I, and I'll just disagree with you on that. And in fact, uh, Evan, over the past several months, we've seen significant reductions in the number pre presenting themselves, whereas uh, last summer we saw averages of approximately 150 people a day. That number is now between 30 and 40. And it's also important to remember who's coming. These are vulnerable people, mostly families. More than 40% more than of, of the people crossing are children. And so, you know, they're carefully vetted to make sure that there's no threat of criminality and, and national security, and, 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 and that's important work that the RCMP and CBSA do. One of the concerns as this becomes a big election issue is that your government, both the immigration minister and the prime minister, have politicized this issue. Is your party demonizing critics who fairly, they're not racist, they're not, uh, they're just criticizing the immigration system and the border. Are you demonizing your critics to try to silence them. I'll tell you what we are doing, Evan. We're working hard to make sure that Canadian law is upheld and applied appropriately and that we're managing these systems on behalf of all Canadians and every part of Canada in an efficient and effective way to protect the safety and security of our country and also to live up to our international obligations. We have had a long history of, of being a country where people have come seeking protection and this is a place where they can receive it. Tell me exactly when the Prime Minister says critics uh, on immigration are quote fear mongering, there's intolerance, there's fear, there's misinformation. Who's doing this fear mongering? I just want, I'm trying to get an example. Why is it fear mongering to ask how to stop tens of thousands of people from irregularly marching across the border? Whether they're families or not, it's, a border is a border. What, what is fear mongering about that? What is intolerant about that? I, seriously, give can, me an can example. Can I tell you, Adam, that in my, Evan, in my experience, fear is, is a truly the greatest enemy of public safety. And when we become afraid of each other, then, then we become less safe. Th that and, wasn't and so my question. My, my, question was, my question was, who is the Prime Minister referring to? Who exactly is fear-mongering about the border? Who's intolerant? I just want to know. Who I think, is it? I think, I think the Prime Minister is quite rightly reminding all Canadians that, that we are a country of immigrants and, and that when people come to our country seeking refuge, we uphold and apply Canadian law. And for those who need our protection, we are a welcoming country. And for those who, who are not eligible for that protection, our processes work to quickly resolve that and determine but, their eligibility. And if they're not, to be they're fair, not, to that, be fair, to be all fair, the municipalities and provinces are not. Look at uh, nobody's against immigration, and we have obligations for refugees and for asylum seekers. But how can you defend a border where you have tens of thousands of people walking across, and then it forces Canadians? to pay ten, hundreds of millions of dollars to process them to see if they belong here or in a safe third country like the United States. How can you defend that system as working when it clearly isn't? Actually, and what we're, we're trying to do is work very hard to make sure it works and to dis discourage and disincentivize people from crossing irregularly. We want people to, to enter the country at a regular point of entry and to apply our processes. But Canadian law is going to be applied regardless of how people come to this country. However they present themselves in Canada, if they seek asylum, they are entitled under our law to, a, to due process and a fair hearing. And we're making sure that that happens. Uh -huh. And when they come into Canada, we're also working really closely with, with the provinces and with, and with the municipalities to make sure that the impact of those processes as we work through Canadian law and due process is not undue right. and, 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 and create hardship. All right, I got to leave it there. Bill Blair, great to have you on the program. Thank you, sir.